Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and you might be a little bit confused why I am not showing my face and that is because unfortunately my Elgato cam link broke but thankfully it is a tier list Tuesday so you don't really need to see my ugly mug and today we are going to be looking at every single team's number one center and tier listing them. We obviously did the number one defenseman last week. You guys seem to really like it so we are running through all 32 teams number one centers and much like with the defenseman I am making this criteria objective it is going to be whoever is leading the team in ice time it's not going to be just picking who I think maybe is the best center whoever is playing the most is the guy that I'm going with so without further ado I did change the tiers a little bit a little bit for this one it goes superstar star elite good solid I got this last time elite star you could argue that that elite is better than a star but whatever Th these are the tiers you know what it is star higher than elite in my opinion and up first we have Alexander Barkov. I think he is a proper superstar when looking at him. He's obviously Selkie level like every single year. A bit of a down year offensively by his standards, but I still think he has 51 points in 41 games. So he is an absolute stud. He is a top 15 player in the entire NHL in my opinion. So he gets the superstar status. Joel Eriksson -Eck, I'm going to go... Good. At the start of this season, I was thinking elite. I thought he was really going to break out and finally go like north of 75 points because again, like a Barkov, he is consistently one of the best defensive centers in the entire league, but the offense has really slowed down since that, since his first 15, 20 games. And he yet again is probably going to go for a solid 60 to 65 points while also being fantastic defensively. Is he a top 50 player in the NHL? I don't think so, but very good in his own right. Robert Thomas, I think you got to have Robert Thomas an elite, probably going to be sniffing around 85, 90 points this year, as well as being around point per game the last two years. He is fully blossoming blossoming into a around top 15 center in the entire NHL, and he's, he's doing it on not that talented of a St. Louis Blues team. I am a big fan of Robert Thomas. Jack Eichel. I think he bumps into that. He's that in between between a superstar and elite. So I'm going to put him in star right now. Obviously is hurt, but when this guy is healthy, he is one of the better setters in the entire NHL around 85 to 90 points. It's one of the most deadly shots in the entire league. Fantastic wrist shot and also very solid defensively. He has been the number one center on a Stanley cup winning team. So I think you got to have him at least in that star. I'm not, he hasn't since that 2019, 2020 season when, where he was like, on pace before they obviously shut down for like 100 points, 45, 50 goals. He hasn't really done that in a regular season to prove that he's a superstar, but definitely a star. Connor Bedard, Connor Bedard's elite. He was in my top 40 on, on my entire NHL. Some people thought that was controversial, but when you look at what this kid was doing, he was on pace for around 35 goals, 35 assists, well, 30 goals around 37, 38 assists, but doing that on a Chicago Blackhawks team that is absolute shit. This guy actually had some talent around him like he hopefully will next year. I think he's going to go for around 40 and 40, maybe 45 and 45. Right now, I do think that he is a top 20 center in the entire NHL, despite not having that massive track record. Based on what we saw, him just absolutely dominate juniors as well as being very good in the NHL with not a lot around him. He is definitely an elite center. Connor McDavid, Easy superstar pick. You could honestly, I mean, he's not playing like he was last year, but you could make your own tier for McDavid, and I wouldn't disagree with you. Rupe Hints. I'm going to go elite. Yet again, on pace for a solid around 40 and 40 kind of season. Not quite a star. Not quite a star for me. He's definitely proven that he is a very, very good number one center, and he has proven it in the playoffs last year that he can perform under pressure. So I think elite does make sense for Rupe Hints. Dylan Larkin. Dylan Larkin also gets elite. Dylan Larkin, for the last three years, for the most part, has been around a 30, low 30 goals, mid 40 assists, kind of point per game, very good two-way guy. He is an elite center. Thomas Hurdle, uh, this is tough because I'm gonna say good because because he if he was if he was on a better team, he would be around 65, 70 points at least. It's just San Jose is so talent deprived that he doesn't have the best stats. But when this guy was on good San Jose teams, he was a very good player, so he gets in good. Tage Thompson, weird. Tage obviously not having the best season this year. I'm gonna bump him down into elite, but I think you still can make an argument for him being a star based on how good he was last year. It, 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 it's, it's a little bit concerning. The shot has not been nearly as good as last year. Last year, he was shooting at a higher rate, obviously. So when looking at Tage Thompson, I, I think he's kind of underrated right now. 
which is crazy to say because he was so high rated last year, but people, people are acting like he might just be an actual 65 point guy. I don't think that's the case. I think next year, full season Buffalo, not being a massive disappointment. He probably goes for 40 and 40 at the bare minimum, maybe 45 and 45. Vincent Trocek, not Mika Zabinajad, is the New York Rangers number one center this year by time of ice. I'm going to put him in good. You can make an argument that this year he's been elite, but also he has been playing with a Panarin that is arguably on pace to set his career highs in terms of points per game, probably going to set easily going to set his uh, career high in terms of points. Vincent Trocek is a very solid, hard nosed number one center. As of right now, do I think he's going to continue to put up point per game over the next couple of years? No, I think he is playing with Panarin. So that does help him a lot, but still a very good player. He ends up in the good tier. Bo Horvat, I'm going to go elite. Uh, I think, I think he's in the same range about as a Robert Thomas and a Dylan Larkin yet again, like he was last year, not goal scoring as much, but around point per game, as well as being very solid defensively. He is an elite top 20-ish center in the entire NHL. Sidney Crosby, still a superstar. I mean, he's carrying not that good of a Penguins team into a potential playoff spot without him. They would probably be a maybe, maybe an 80, 85 point team, in my opinion. So he's still at the top of his game. Well, not, not, not as good as he used to be, but he's still very elite. Pedersen, Pedersen's also a superstar. I should have staggered some of these better. We got the elite and superstar basically all filled out. But Pedersen, yeah, at the, at the end of last year, you could say maybe he was a superstar last year, but maybe I weren't quite yet, re- yet ready to put him in superstar. This year has left absolutely no doubts. This guy going forward should be 105-ish points while also playing fantastic defense. Nick Suzuki, this is tough. I don't think that he's on the same tier as these guys, but he is putting up like 78-point pace on and very good defense. I'm going to put him in good for now, but I, I, I'm going to like, I don't put the rose in order, but Nick Suzuki would be my next guy up. He, he's obviously on a dog shit team. Him, Slavkovsky and Cole, Cole Caulfield have formed a very good line. Teams are able to absolutely pressure the shit out of that line because they have nobody past that with all their injuries. And Suzuki, despite that, has been very productive and has been very good at shutting down other teams' best players. Nick Suzuki is teetering on elite. I, I, I could definitely hear elite arguments for Nick Suzuki, but I probably would take, I would definitely take all six of these guys. Over Nick Suzuki. Sean Couturier, solid. He has 33 points in 50 games. He's no longer that fantastic point per game uh, two-way center that won the goddamn Selkie. But we all expected that. He was coming off major, major back-to-back back surgeries. Didn't play in a year and a half. So the fact that he even still now is a 55-point solid two-way guy is very impressive. And the Philadelphia Flyers are a playoff team right now in part because of Couturier's play. Nick Bajugstad, I always fuck up that name. but. He's solid again. He is the number one guy right now in Arizona in terms of ice time. You could argue Nick Schmaltz, but Nick Schmaltz plays on the wing a lot. Bajukstad's playing the most right now. Having a bit of a resurgence. He's definitely outperforming what you expected him for the Arizona Coyotes. But is he an actual number one center? No, he's probably a a decent second line center on an actual playoff team. Maybe even low end second line center. So you got to put him in that bottom tier. I don't think that's that controversial. Mark Scheifele, elite. It, he's just been very consistent in his career around point per game, 35 to 40 goals for the most part. Mark Scheifele has definitely proven himself to be an elite player. Although he's, he wasn't in my top 50, he definitely would have been in an expanded top 60, top 65. Ryan O'Reilly, I'm going to go good. You can argue for elite considering he is such a good defensive two-way guy. He is having a bit of a resurgence after a down year offensively last year with the Blues and the Leafs, but he's definitely a good number one center. And the fact they're only paying him $4.5 million is absolutely crazy and a fantastic deal for the Nashville Predators. Jack Hughes, he cemented himself as superstar. I already had him as a top 10 player coming into the season, but he he's left basically no doubts. I think he has 47 points in like 34 four games so if he didn't get hurt he would have cruised past 100 points for the first time in his career and next year i fully expect at least 105 points if he is fully healthy dylan strom again would be a very good second line center on a competitive team uh considering he is on the washington capitals he has to kind of fill that first line center role i don't think that he is a true first liner but they're only paying him five million dollars so he has a good contract but He's solid. He's around 60-ish points. Okay, two-way game. He's a solid player. Tim Stutzla. Tim Stutzla, I'm going to go elite. I think 
We were expecting him to definitely enter that star category this year, but it hasn't happened. Tim Stutz, until we see it, especially goal scoring wise, we got to see him shoot back up. He is shooting well, well, well below what he did last year. I think he's shooting like eight or nine percent. That's going to go up next year. He's going to have a far better season next year, even if the Senators aren't that much better of a team. He, he, he's just bound to improve. This was a down year and he's still putting up around point per game. So I think you definitely got to have him in elite. And I think by next year, he's going to be in star. McKinnon. Arguably the best player in the entire NHL right now, outplaying McDavid probably. Easy superstar. Leo Carlson, he's actually, I was surprised when I saw him uh, being the, the Ducks' time on ice leader in terms of centers. You got to put him in solid though, although this is my boy, although I love Leo Carlson. I think he's one day going to be in either star or superstar right now at 18 years old. He's just, he's just not he's not a true, true number one setter, and he shouldn't be at 18 years old. Come on now, unless you're goddamn Connor Bedard. But he has been very encouraging. I think by next year, he'll jump up at least into good, and then in three years, probably elite, then four or five years into those higher tiers. Right now, solid, though, just because he's so young, he's so raw, he's got to adjust more to the NHL, but he has been playing very good. Pavel Zaka, this might be controversial because he, is, he has more time on ice than Charlie Coyle, and Charlie Coyle might be in good. Might be in solid, but I'm going to put Pavel Zaka in solid right now. Definitely has exceeded expectations for the Boston Bruins fans, considering they traded Eric Hall for him last year. He was very good. I think he was around high 50s points. Yet again, putting up around that pace. So considering what they were expecting from him, he's been very good for them. But overall, in the grand scheme of things, definitely just a solid number one center. Braden Point, we got our second. <laughs> look at all these other rows. We got our second guy in that star category. Uh, definitely out playing with Nikita Kucherov helps a lot, a lot, but you don't score 50 goals without being an extremely elite player. You don't lead to your lead, your team as a number one center to back-to-back -back Stanley cups in another cup final without being a fantastic player in your own, right? Braden point is a top 20 player and a star in the NHL. Matthews might probably not going to get 60 at this point. I, I, I think the hype is a little bit overblown, but still, if he ends up with mid success, hit like he's a scrub, but uh, yeah, he's still a superstar. Absolutely. No doubt. Anze Kopitar. I'm gonna put him in good. Uh, his offense has fallen off a little bit this year, only on pace for like around 70 points, which is still good again, as well as he's still good defensively, but no longer exactly Selkie level. So overall, he's around the 70 point solid two way guy, similarly to a Suzuki, to a, to a Joel Erickson, to around the Ryan O'Reilly. I don't think that he's with these. I don't think he can fly with these young bucks. I would probably choose these guys over an Anze Kopitar at this time. Mikel Backlund is technically the Calgary Flames number one center, just because he plays in basically like every single situation. I know Nazem Kadri is probably better, is better than Michael Backlund, but we got to look at it objectively with the thing. So he's good. He's a very solid defensive player, not a lot of offense. So I think you got to have him in solid. Alex Wenberg, a guy that has really exceeded expectations this year, but I like even with how good he's playing relative to expectations in the grand scheme of things, I got to keep going back to. He is a solid second line center at this point. He's not a legit number one, and that's in part why Seattle hasn't really had the same success they had last year. They're expecting Matty Beniers to emerge as that number one center. Beniers is fantastic defensively, but hasn't really taken the next step defensively or offensively. So instead, Wenberg has really had to carry the load. Sebastian Ajo in star. Sebastian Ajo is having his best offensive season of his career, going to go north of 90 points for the first time in his career, as well as being a fantastic player that can play in basically every single situation. I think he has cemented himself as at least like a top 23, in my opinion, top 20 player in the NHL. He definitely needs to be in star. And then lastly, Boone Jenner. Solid. He might be the best player in solid, not going to lie. No. Mm, I would have ranked those guys, whatever. But um, nah, he, he, he he's, he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of a number one center, not a true number one center. On one of the best deals in hockey. Only making, I think, $3.75 million the next couple of years. If I was the Columbus Blue Jackets, I would look into honestly trading him. Even though you're captain, you can get an absolute haul for him. So this is the tier list. We got... Seven guys in superstar. Yeah, I think those guys are all top 15 players. Then star is like that 15 to 30 in the NHL. Elite is the remaining like top 50 guys. Good. Very good two-way guys for the most part in that tier. And then solid guys that are second line centers for the most part, but are kind of forced to play a more elevated role. But let me know in the comments. What do you think? Hopefully the next time I see you guys, I'll have my Elgato cam link fixed and you guys can see my face again. But let me know in the comments. What do you think? And I'll be seeing the next one.